Hey everyone, Arthur of Gaming here, and today we're discussing Three Dragon Anti the Legendary Edition by WizKid Games. Uh, I, I played the original version of this a long, long time ago, and this new updated version has some uh, extra cool stuff in it. Now, this is both a game you can play just as normal people in the real world, or they have rules for it to be used in game. So if you are playing Dungeons and Dragons and you need st some sort of game that you want to gamble at, you can pull this out, slap it on the table, and use it in game as well as just playing it as regular old people. So the idea behind this game is you are trying to build a flight of three dragons. So here we have all sorts of dragons on the table, and I have these specific ones out for um, they are the legendaries of each color. There is an there is an entire deck like this full of the, all the different color dragons. And everybody's dealt, dealt cards, and you're going to take turns going around the table one at a time playing a dragon. Um, the person at the end of three turns who has the highest strength, so there's the strength in the upper left-hand corner, highest strength flight wins the turn. And at the beginning of the turn, you're going to, everybody puts an anti card in. So you take one of your cards from your hand, you put it face down in the middle, and then after everybody's put one in, you flip it up. The highest numbered card put in the middle uh, ends up being how much everybody has to ante in the middle for that turn. How you determine how much money you start with is the standard out of, out of the book is to just start with 10 gold pieces per per player. So if you're playing a three-player game, everybody starts with 30, uh, and there's gold pieces there, and there's platinum pieces here, which are worth 10 gold pieces. So you can start with 30 uh, in a three-player game, 40 in a four, fourth-player game, etc. Um, you can also just in-game, if you're playing Dungeons & Dragons, however much you would normally play in the in the game. But it's like... Uh, it, it's like Texas Hold'em. Everybody starts with the same amount of money and you play till one person is left. So that's the idea there. So if you're playing it in Dungeons and Dragons, the, you know, specifically within, within the game, make sure you're kind of starting with that kind of, kind of idea. Now, all dragons have a power on the bottom of them. So let's look at the black dragon here. The black dragon, this is the legendary, um, steal one gold from the stakes and take two gold from the opponent on your left. So then take two gold from the opponent to your left and three gold from the opponent to their left, and so on, until you've taken gold from from everyone. So these are the, the the legendary versions. The actual version of the black dragon just says, "Take steal three gold from from the from the stakes." Now the stakes is the initial anti money that you all throw throw in the middle. So the big thing with these is though is these powers only trigger if the person who plays directly before you plays a dragon of when when they play a play a dragon. Let's say they play. Uh, let's say the person before you plays this, you know, three black three dragon. So if you played a black five dragon right after them, you don't get to trigger because your dragon's stronger than theirs. If your dragon is equal to or less than, you get to trigger the power at the bottom. So if they played the three dragon and you played the two dragon, you get to trigger. Or if you're the first person to play your card in that round, you also get to trigger. So all the dragons have a unique unique ability. There's five colors for the for the dark for the um, evil dragons, which are the which are the chromatics, which you know are the same five for Tiamat's heads, which there's Tiamat there, um, and she's a thirteen, which is the highest card in the game. There are also five metallic dragons. You have the silver, the gold, the copper, the bronze, and the brass, um, and they all have special powers on them too. Then, in addition to all those dragons, um, there are some normal mortals. So the thing about mortals is they cannot be part of a dragon flight. So even if you had, uh, uh, which I'll explain dragon flights and flights in a second, three or two dragons and a mortal, the mortal does not can count as a third third dragon for a dragon flight. So dragon flights. The great thing in this, uh, the great way to really make money is dragon flights. So if you played three dragons of the same color. So let's say this was your, your dragon flight. You play three green dragons, uh, four, five, and a six. When you play the third dragon, so let's play, say the four is my third, third dragon, you then f uh, fire off a color dragon flight because it's all three the same color. So you look here, a color flight, when three dragons are the same color or three three mortals, so I guess three, they've changed that a little bit, so three mortals can also fire off a color, color flight. Um, each opponent pays you gold equals the strength of the second strongest dragon in, in, the, in the flight. So in this case, the second strongest dragon is a five. So as soon as you play that third dragon, all your opponents have to give you five, five gold. 
The other kind of dragon flight is a strength flight. So let's go with this. It does not matter if they are the same. They don't have to be evil dragons. They don't have to be good dragons. They can be a mixture of, of the two. Um, I'm just trying to take a quick look for a... Oh, here we go. So let's say this is your, your flight. 555. Five, five. So this is your strength flight. If you're, as soon as you play that third dragon, which is your strength flight, you look at the strength flight. Three cards of the same strength. You steal gold from the stakes equals the strength of one of the cards in your strength flight. You also take two anti-cards and add them to your hand. So, oh, they actually, their example actually counts fives like, like I have. So if you have three strength five cards in your flight, you steal five gold from the stakes and then any two, any two of the remaining anti-cards to your hand. There are lots of cards that deal with uh, manipulating the the anti-cards. Um, some of the dragons, uh, like this one, this is the bronze dragon, where when you play it, if it triggers, so if the strength is equal to or less than the person that plays before you, uh, if it triggers, you get to put the two weakest anti-cards into your hand. So there are lots of ways to like steal those anti-cards. And then at the end of every round, um, or not at the end of every round, yeah, at the end of every round, you draw a card, I believe, and also, if you run, if you get down to one card, uh, you flip over the top card of the deck, pay whatever the strength is in money to the ante, and then you draw up to, I think it's six cards. Um, I'll have to take a look for that. But, uh, yeah, so it's a very simple game. Uh, it's a pretty cool game. It's fun. It can be quick. I mean, obviously, depending on how much money you're putting out, putting on the table, you can make it very, very, very quick. Or you can make it last long, a long time. Uh, but let's look at some of the other powers of the dragon. So the, so the green dragons, for instance, your opponent to your left chooses either to give you a weaker evil dragon from their hand or to pay you five five gold. So if you play this the person and it triggers, the person to your left either gives you an evil dragon of seven or less or they give you money. Those can be handy if you have if you play this first and for instance you don't have three green dragons for your color flight so you could play that and if the other person doesn't have a choice but to give you a green a dragon it might complete your cut your color flight for you you have the red dragon which again if it triggers when when you play it the opponent with the strongest flight so the person who has the strongest flight at the time pays you one gold and you take a random card from that player's hand you have the black dragon, which we already looked at. Um, here's the silver dragon. Each player with at least one good dragon in their flight draws a card. So that's pretty straightforward. It gets cards in people's hands. Um, the weakest opponent pays you two gold. So the person with the weakest flight, they give you two, two gold. It doesn't mean weakest as an actual strength. Like you don't have to arm, arm wrestle or anything. Um, we looked at the bronze already, which is put the two weakest anti-cards in your hand. Um, this is one of my favorites, the Copper Dragon. So if the Copper Dragon triggers, so here's a little one, right? A little tiny guy. More than likely, he's going to trigger off of the previous person. Uh, I think one will always trigger because I think the lowest card there is is a one. So this one is discard this card and replace it with the top card of the deck. That card's power triggers regardless of its strength. So the Copper Dragons are just morphers and they turn into whatever, which is kind of fun. Although personally, I like to try uh, and do a color flight with 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 copper and the only way to do that is to not trigger any of the copper dragons um so it's really hard to do but it's fun um the gold dragon is you draw a card for each good dragon in, in, in your flight um green dragon we we looked at uh, weaker evil dragon or pay you five five gold um, black dragon we looked at steal three gold from from the stakes so this just is just a way to steal money from the middle that now when you'd want to do that you might want to do that if uh, you have no chance of winning the hand so you might want to steal gold out of, out of the stakes uh, the blue dragon each opponent gives you one gold or each opponent adds one gold to the stakes for each card in your flight so if you play this as like the third dragon or something you can get a lot of money from from your opponents or get them to up the ante in the stakes And then there's the Brass Dragon, which the opponent to your right chooses to either give you a stronger, stronger, so like this guy's a one, so pretty much everything, a good dragon from their hand, or pay you five, go five gold. So those are all the different powers that they have. And so at the end of a flight, when the three cards have been played, the person with the strongest flight wins. Even if a color flight triggers or a strength flight triggers, and you do that when those two flights trigger, 
And then after all that happens, at the end, whoever has the strongest one wins. If there's a tie, you continue to play until the, the, the tie is broken. Now, there's also um, uh, a couple of powers from like Tiamat. So Tiamat counts as any of the evil evil dragons, but as long as you have her and a good dragon in your flight, you can't win. So if you, you know, for instance, had Tiamat out uh, and maybe had like this nice legendary red dragon out or something like that, and you were hoping for another, you know, evil dragon, you don't, and like someone stole one from you, you know, and you don't have your third evil one, you can do the copper deal, you know, and drop a copper dragon on and hope by discarding the copper dragon that you draw an evil an evil dragon to finish up your flight. If you happen to draw a good dragon, you can't win that hand. And Bahama is the same 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 way. So uh, as long as you have an evil dragon, you you can't win. And each other player with both good and evil dragons in your flight pays you ten gold when you play him. So he is powerful, and there's only one of him one of him him in the deck. So uh, there are all these legendary dragons are are new for the new legendary edition, and they all have like enhanced abilities from their color. Um, and there's a bunch of mortals um, that you can also play. I'm not going to show you all of their powers because uh, I want to uh, keep that a secret. I don't want to show want to show anything away. Now we have these little ready tokens here. Uh, in the rules, there is a way to play if you're playing in three dragon ante with D and D. Uh, there are powers that your players can pick, card draw abilities and other various things that you can play if you qualify for them. So see, the fast hand says, if your PC is proficient in the sleight of hand skill, you can steal one gold from the stakes. Uh, you only have to draw one extra card, not two, but you steal one extra gold. So when you use your ability, you flip the ready token over to say to say that you've used it. Um, and there's a bunch of little abilities in here from card denial, um, abilities and card draw abilities and anti-manipulation and such so those are all abilities that you can add into your actual D D game to uh, enhance the game so this is three three dragon ante uh it's very fun outside of DD. it's also fun in inside of DD. it's a pretty quick game uh let's see what they say on the box here what do they say 30 minutes uh that, that that's about right you can certainly play through pretty pretty quick but again it's a lot like uh uh um texas texas hold'em so you can have a you can have a flip, and people could be out really really quick. So uh, it's kind of interesting that that away. So that's it. Three dragon ante. There you go. A quick little view of all the different components and cards and such. Uh, three dragon ante uh, by Wiz Kids Games. Go go check it out. Could just get yourself a copy. Use it in game or use it out outside side of game. And uh, this is the Arthur of Gaming. Please look me up on Instagram at at the the Arthur of Gaming. Please like this post. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be putting up a lot more posts on uh, role playing stuff, accessories, more board games, and all that. And uh, comment. I'd love to hear from you guys whether you're liking things, what other kind of things you might be interested in seeing. So Three Dragon Ante, Legendary Edition, Wiz Kids Games.